other guys didn't do. Mm -hmm. We talked about, you touched on it yesterday about heart. Sure. But if, if I'm a kid and I'm saying, well, heart, how much does it take? Were there times when you worked out and you were throwing up? I mean, you work yourself and you're running when you're throwing up. You're trying to make the team, trying to get better. Did you go through those times? I'm sure you did. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to speak for you, but well, go ahead. I grew up in a small town in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, where it's known as the Steel Town. Everyone knows where the Pittsburgh Steelers play. Yeah. That's a mean town. Well, I grew up in the projects there, okay, and it was tough. And you had to prove yourself every day. I mean, not, it's not like, you, can't, you know, you, uh, now you get to go to the playground and play with your buddies and your moms and dads are there. But when I was growing up, my mom and dad had to work. So we, I, didn't, I didn't get a chance to um, uh, have that security of my mom and dad around. So I had to prove myself every day. And I hung around with a lot of guys that were older than me. And it was tough because you had to perform at the, at the playground. I mean, I was eight, nine years old trying to play with, hang out with kids that were 14, 15. They were rough. You know, you didn't, it was either, my dad would call me to come home and eat dinner, and it was either go home and eat dinner or get your butt whooped by your friends. Because sometimes I had to sacrifice a butt whooping for my dad to play the, the game. So, um, <clears throat> one thing it did, did teach me, though, was the fact that no matter how many times I failed, I kept coming back. Okay, and that's one thing that I, I really have to emphasize. Guys, when I was in the minor leagues, there were so many players and pitchers that were better than I were. I mean, they're really on a talent level. Um, <clears throat> um, I went to LSU. I got drafted in the third round. Um, I went right to A-ball. There were kids on the team. They used to have um, the gun in the dugout, you know, how fast you were throwing. And there was guys on my team that were throwing 98, 99, 100 miles an hour. And we had probably 11 pitchers on the team. And I would, I, I, I would think that, um, that like eight of them were in the high 90s. And a lot of them just fell off the face of the earth when they got to a certain level. Uh, when you got to double A, you had to, you had to be, make adjustments. And when you got to triple A, you had to make adjustments. And right before you, of course, when you make it to the big leagues, you have to make a ton of adjustments because those guys are so good. But the one thing that, that I kept, um, the one thing that was still to me when I was a kid was the fact that I never gave up. And that's one thing I just really want to preach to you guys. No matter if you have a good day or no matter if you have a bad day, you got, you're going to be able to play tomorrow. So don't let that other team know that you're mad. Don't let that other team know you're sad. Just get out there and play your game and have fun. The biggest thing is that if you're having fun at your job, you're going to enjoy it. Okay? You guys all listen to that? Yeah. Have fun at this game because that's what it is. It's a baseball game. It's not a baseball business. But the most important thing is you're going to fail. This game is about failure. You're going to fail at this game. So learn how to learn how to take that. All right. Don't go throwing the bats over the over the screens and yelling at your coaches and parents. Take it like you're going to take it. Be a man about it. You know you're going to fail. Understand that and move on. Take your one at bat. You strike out. You know what? I'm going to get him next time. You make your bad pitch. You know what? I'm going to get the next guy. Take that, all right? And you're going to fail. Be good at it. Be, be, be a stand-up guy. That's it. Real quick, uh, I don't know if you guys know, but Curtis was also the assistant to the GM with the OS team, okay? And he's one of the wizards in baseball, okay? And he was the assist, one of the, one of the assistants to the GM. You can't just be a good baseball player, okay? They want baseball players and guys with a brain. They're not going to take baseball players and dump them. Okay, so this guy has a brain. So what would you look for in the minor leagues when you're just sitting there, you know, shooting the crap, and you see a triple-A guy, you're going down, you're, you're scouting guys around, and you go, hey, B.O., uh, you know, this is the deal. I mean, it's pretty much cut dry at that point, but would, would you say, hey, this guy's a hustler. He gets after it. You don't see him stretching his legs. He doesn't have any hamstring problems with trade time, right. you know, or whatnot. <clears throat> yeah, I can honestly say that uh, when Dustin Pedroia was coming up, that's when I just started uh, helping out with the GM job. And I don't know if you guys know Dust, Dustin Pedroia. He's probably just a little bit bigger than, than you are. Just maybe just a little bit. Probably the same height, but just a little bit thicker. And uh, he's not the biggest guy in the world, but when he plays baseball, he plays like he's 6'5". He really does. He, and he, he makes you know that he's out there. So it doesn't matter how big you are, how wide you are, how small you are. It doesn't matter. What matters is right here, guys. It's got to be It's inside the um, skeleton area your heart. If this is how big you can measure a guy.
Okay? Don't worry about anything else. You bust your butt. All right? You listen, you listen to your coaching staff. Listen to your parents. Okay? Take the advice that you need to take and go out there and do the best that you can. That's all you can do. As long as you can look at yourself every day and say, you know what? I tried my best. Well, hey, let's give uh, Curtis a hand for being here. I appreciate it.